Hey guys, my name is Jason. Welcome back to part two of our video series where we try and answer the question, is it worth smelting my gold concentrates? And if you've missed the first part or you want to review, I'll leave it right after this introduction. If you want to skip ahead, I'll leave a timestamp right up here in the corner. Here's what we're going to be working with today. And this is uh, a little bit of a special sample. This came out of Ghana. A friend from Ghana sent it up to me. And they were having some difficulty with the matte layer in this. So the matte layer is the sulfides that form during the smelt. And if you don't get your mix quite right, you'll have this layer between the metal on the bottom, a matte layer, and then the slag will be on top. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh out a sample. I'm looking for about 100 grams. This stuff is wet, and so I'm gonna overshoot a little bit. We're gonna to go to about 110 or 115 grams. And that'll give us about 100 grams of concentrates. So there's our initial concentrates. I have no idea what's in here. I don't know if it's pyrite, pyrotite. There's maybe some arsenopyrite in here. There may be some zinc sulfides. So it's really a total mystery on what's in this. So I'm gonna try and just use my general normal flux that I use. I'm gonna use some oxidizer. And I've got a special ingredient I haven't used before that I'm gonna try on this melt. I've been having real good luck lately mixing one part concentrates, one part anhydrous borax, 102, 103. So this is our anhydrous borax. Another part of soda ash, there we go. Then you add in somewhere between 20 and 40 grams of silica sand. It didn't look like that stuff had a whole lot of silica in it. So we're gonna shoot for about 30, somewhere in there. Now, because we have a sulfide rich con, I'm gonna add in some potassium nitrate. And what this does in the smelt is it releases oxygen, which bonds to the sulfide molecules as well as the sulfur that's driven off during the smelting. And the idea is that it turns the sulfides into oxides, which are then absorbed into the slags. 50 grams might be a little strong, but we'll try it. So we'll add that in there. The problem is if you add too much, you can get some boil overs in your crucible, in your furnace, which you don't want. So I just got this stuff and I'm pretty excited about it. This is bismuth oxide. And in the past for my collector metal, I've used bismuth metal, but with the oxide, you get a couple advantages. The first is it has oxygen attached to it. And what the oxygen does is when it comes in contact with a sulfide molecule, it reduces the bismuth to metal and it oxidizes the sulfide. So you get iron oxide or, and that helps reduce the amount of sulfides you have in your ore, reducing the likelihood of getting a mat as well as getting your collector metal really, really fine, really, really disseminated throughout the charge. And it really helps collect all that super fine, fine gold and silver we're trying to collect at the bottom. Now I wasn't paying attention. I was shooting for 50 and I added 100. There we go. Now we got 49 grams of bismuth oxide. There's all our ingredients. Here's our 100 grams of concentrates. Here's our stuff all mixed up. It's a little bit orangey, orange in color. We'll put it in a brand new crucible here. There we go. Put our crucible in our furnace here. Well, that smelt we just poured, it ended up boiling over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat it. I'm gonna have all the ingredients, including the concentrates. We're gonna try it again. I gotta keep all that stuff in the crucible because when it boils over, uh, I might lose a little bit of collector metal and gold with it. Well, we're getting some interesting stuff here. So the first one that boiled over, I tipped it over out of the cone mold. I did not see any collector metal in the bottom. That tells me that the oxidizer has oxidized all the sulfides away and there's nothing left to reduce the bismuth oxide down to metallic form. So I just poured the 50 gram sample and I think the same thing happened. No collector metal, I haven't checked yet but I didn't see anything pour out. What I'm going to try now is I'm going to do the same thing, same recipe. I'm going to add some nails after it's all molten, all the oxidizers have been oxidized away. See if I can reduce any bismuth down to metallic form and have it collect in the bottom. 
I'm gonna smelt the nails another 15 minutes after I put them in, and then we'll pour it into our cone mold, see if we get any reduced bismuth out of that. want to try just the bismuth oxide without any oxidizer and see if we can uh, use the bismuth oxide to oxidize sulfides and induce the bismuth in the metallic form and then we can collect the bottom. Here is the exact same flux recipe with the oxidizer, with the bismuth oxide, and nails after it's all molten. But this is some concentrates from my new gold mine, and I know these are pretty much pure iron sulfides. And you can already see the difference in the slag, but I wanted to do one for comparison. And so we can check the difference between this one and the the other stuff from Ghana. Here's my sulfide slag, and here's the stuff from Ghana. So a lot more glassy. I think a lot of that stuff was oxides already instead of sulfides. Whereas this stuff, it's, it's kind of glassy still, but it's not as transparent. This stuff you can almost see through in the corners and stuff. This stuff is, it's almost waxy looking. I don't know how else to describe it. The thing I'm really happy about is there's the metal prill and there are no, there's no matte layer at all. That flux recipe works really, really well for pure sulfides as well as, you know, more oxides if that's what we had from Ghana. So that's, I'm really, really happy with that recipe and that, that mix for, for flux. It ends up being 89% bismuth by weight. So if we put in 25 grams of bismuth oxide, we should end up with 22.5 grams of bismuth. Now real quick, I wanted to go over these. This was the Ghana sample with the nails and the bismuth oxide. This was the Ghana sample with no nails, no oxidizer, and just the bismuth oxide. We got less than one gram, a little button there. And that tells me there's hardly any sulfides in there because if there was a bunch of sulfides, it would have reduced a bigger button of bismuth. This is just the bismuth metal. I didn't add any nails. And so we lost uh, about 15 grams of the bismuth metal, probably from the oxidizer that I put in there. And then this is Jason's new gold mine concentrates. Now we're gonna get our precious metals out of these buttons. And to do that, we're gonna use a cupel. This thing I'm gonna heat up to about 1850 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna place our bismuth prill in there and it will melt the metal. It'll oxidize all the base metals, the bismuth, the copper, iron, any other base metals that are in there. And the cupel will absorb them like a sponge, leaving just the precious metal button in the cupel when it's all done. All right, we'll start with the nail sample. Got our cupel all warmed up. First button there. Now that'll start melting pretty fast, I believe. There it goes. Nice pure bismuth button. That's what we like to see. It kind of turns gray on the surface. And then it'll start to open up. There it goes. Those oxides are turning liquid. And they're becoming absorbed by the cupel. That's a very nice little showing. Then you have the dark raindrop looking things on the surface. That's the oxides forming in our hot oxygen rich environment. And that cupel will start to turn kind of that dark gray color. Well, now I want to explore a little bit about is it worth smelting 
these concentrates. And so, you know, how much gold do you need to make it worth it? And so we're going to take 300 grams of argonic concentrates, which I've weighed out at 330, again, 10% for water weight. I've got 300 grams anhydrous borax. I got 300 grams soda ash. I think I've got 100 grams of silica and I've got 120 grams of potassium nitrate. I'm gonna add 150 grams of our bismuth oxide. Now we'll get it shook up real nice. Pour it in our large number 12 crucible here. And we should have enough room there for it to expand. We've got all our beads cupelled. They're all spread out here for everyone to see. <laughs> I promise they're there. A couple of interesting things. Here's the bead from the 14 gram button with the nail. And unfortunately, these are all so small, I can't weigh them on my thousandth of a gram scale. So we just gotta go kind of by the size. But I got 14 grams of collector metal. This one here is, bigger than this one but not by a whole bunch and this was the one that had less than one gram and so it's really interesting that the ratio of the size of the collector metal button doesn't necessarily mean the ratio of the amount of gold you recover this one is the one i added the bismuth metal directly to and i cannot see any gold bead in there at all with my naked eye once I'm editing the video, I might be able to find one when I zoom in, but I, I didn't recover anything with the bismuth metal, which was interesting because I've used that in the past and recovered gold, but maybe the bismuth metal isn't as efficient as the bismuth oxide is. And then I did an experiment. I've got my Jason's new gold mine concentrates, 22 gram button out of that one, and here's my bead right there as well which it's hard to kind of qualitatively size them but they're all roughly the same size right and i know that these should be about 150 grams per ton 
So we're probably looking at somewhere in the 100 grams, 150 grams a ton range for all of our concentrates. Now I did do a larger sample. I smelted down a 300 gram sample, but I got an 89 gram button. And then over here, I just poured this one. This is Jason's new gold mine concentrates number two as well. And I did a 500 gram sample of this. And so I'm gonna be really interested to see if we can scale up essentially 10 times the size of the bead and hopefully we can get a weight on it. And then we can kind of answer our question is it worth smelting 500 grams at a time? This is also interesting. I put a piece of flat bar in with my number two concentrates and you can see how much of the steel got eaten up there. It took a lot of steel off of this flat bar. You can see how thick it was. I think it's quarter inch and it just took it down kind of to a real thin little flat paddle there. Interesting that it ate it up around the top here too. Well, I beat on this thing for a while and it does look like there might be a thin little coating of bismuth on there, especially down at the bottom there. And that would be where it was sitting in the puddle, right at the very bottom of the crucible. Up here where it wasn't in the flux at all, there's really no, other than the discoloration of the steel, it doesn't look shiny or like a different metal, but right there on the surface of the bar where it was in the flux, it looks like there might be some bismuth attached there. And that might explain where some of our collector metal is going. If it's fusing itself to the nails or to the iron bar in there, we're gonna expect a little bit of loss. That also is gonna have a little bit of loss of precious metals because you essentially make a bismuth alloy with precious metals. And if some of it gets bonded or welded to the steel, you're gonna lose some of those precious metals. Well, let's see how much is in our 500 gram sample. Well, here's our metal cone. And if all the bismuth reduced with our steel, then we should have about 135 grams of bismuth here. 125, not bad, considering we might have a few grams here on our steel. So I think that's really, really good. We recovered most of our bismuth and our collector metal. So most of our precious metal is going to be in here. And now we got to get our precious metals out of our buttons. And to do that, we're going to use a cupel. We're going to put this in our oven. We're going to heat it up to your 1900 degrees. When you put your metal prill in the cupel, the bismuth is going to melt. Once it melts, that bismuth and all the other base metals are going to oxidize. And those oxides are going to roll off the molten metal puddle and be absorbed by the cupel, but the cupel won't absorb any metal. And what's left in the bottom of our cupel after it's all done is the precious metals. Okay, we're gonna see if we can do a live swap here. This is our Ghana sample. And now we're putting in my new gold mine concentrates. Now let's go weigh our Ghana bead, see how much it weighs. Okay, our bead on our scale, 0 0.035 grams. Well, our 0 0.034 gram button in metric tons ends up being 113 grams per metric ton. So that would be considered really rich ore, but very, very low grade concentrates. This is not worth smelting on the scales that we're doing. Okay, let's check on our number two concentrate. There's a little teeny tiny little bead in there. I'm gonna put a new one in the furnace because this one that we've been using is full. It's gray all the way around, so it's absorbed as much as it can handle. And you always wanna warm up your cupels before you put your bismuth in them. And there must be moisture in them that bubbles out of them because when you have the molten bismuth in there and it's cold, it bubbles and spits and pops bismuth everywhere. But let's see if we can weigh this little bead. There it is. That's smaller than the one from Ghana. 0 0.007. Same calculation as last time, 14 grams per metric ton. That's, that's actually less gold than's in the run of mine ore. So the hammer mill and shaker table are doing a pretty darn good job getting all the gold out because there's hardly anything left in the number two cons. It's all going into the number one. We're gonna do one more smelt here. This is some really, really rich sulfide concentrates, mostly pyrite from one of my past customers. And this stuff is supposedly loaded with gold. 
500 grams of cons, 500 grams of borax, 500 grams of soda ash, 200 grams of silica sand. We'll add 50 more. 250 grams of silica sand. 250 roughly grams of oxidizer. 151 grams of bismuth oxide. Pour it in our crucible. And back in the furnace. This is the one we're excited about. This is the one that should have some gold in it. All right, we're gonna have a look here. Hopefully, this is a pretty good sized button. It's been in for a little over an hour and a half. We started with 111 grams. It's still molten, but it is done cupelling. Quite a bit of silver in this. Maybe 60 or 70% gold, judging by the color. 2.922 grams so just a whisker under three grams from 500 grams of concentrates well here's the stats on that one we just did that's 2.9 gram button in 500 grams it gives us 5800 grams per ton but i figured it's only about 66 percent gold so there's really only about 3800 grams of gold per ton in that stuff and so our button weighs about two grams of gold. That's about 140 US dollars for that smelt. I want to try one more smelt. This is a bunch of mat that I've been saving up over the last couple of months. And I wanted to mix it all together and smelt it down and see if we can recover any more precious metals from our various mat layers. Let's see what we have here in our excess mat. So this is interesting because this was essentially pure sulfides, right? This was all the mat that I'd saved up over the last little while. It's kind of some weird looking stuff. That might be a mat layer. But let me bang around here a little bit and see what I can find out. So here's what we got. We got our metal prill underneath. This is our bismuth collector metal. And then this kind of rusty looking stuff on top is a matte layer, just a very, very thin matte layer compared to all the sulfides we put in there or matte that we put in there. It's, um, it's actually magnetic. So, you know, it's, it's got a lot of iron in it. I don't know if I reduced iron somehow, but we need to get that separated and the Bismuth sometimes is brittle, so I don't want to whack on it too hard and have all my bismuth shatter all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our metal button and our matte layer, and we're going to put it all in a cupel. And in the first two minutes, all the bismuth should be melted off, and then hopefully I can reach in there and pull out the matte layer, and we'll let the bismuth cupel away. Oh. 
So there's our mat. A few little beads of bismuth in there, but not too bad. I think I got it pretty well separated from the bismuth. All right, let's check on our mat button here. Ooh, look how silver it is. You can see my reflection in it. Our button looks horrible because I tried to get it out with my tongs and stuff and it had some mat still on the tongs and it kind of welded to it and then the bottom of the button got stuck in the cupel. <laughs> but we have a significant amount of precious metals, more than I thought actually. Let's see how much we have here. Uh, one and a half grams. It's, you can tell it's very silvery in color. And what I've read and what I've seen is the silver ends up going into the mat a lot more than the gold. But there's probably some gold in here. It's, it's less than half, judging by the color. So you might have three quarters of a gram, half a gram of gold in there. All right, guys. Well, we've come a long way. We've done a lot of experiments. But now it's time to answer the question, is it worth smelting your gold concentrates? And the answer is, it depends, right? If you have enough gold and silver, it makes it worthwhile. It all depends on your individual situation. Volume is the key. If you can smelt a larger volume, it doesn't take a whole lot more fuel. It doesn't take a whole lot more flux. That stuff is really cheap. It takes a little bit more time, but if you can smelt 500 or 1,000 grams instead of 50 or 100, you're going to make more money. For me personally, I need at least a gram or probably two per smelt to make it worthwhile. Somewhere in that 50 to $100 range that pays for all the materials, the flux, the crucibles, all the fuel, and that way you can actually make some money. When I get these little tiny beads, that's just me experimenting, uh, looking at the value of the sulfides, seeing how much gold's in my concentrates. So not all the smelts that I do are worthwhile and, and I'm making money on. It's just more of an experimentation, it's an assay process. But if you're gonna go into production smelting, your concentrates need to have at least a gram or two to make it worthwhile. It takes probably the whole process all the way through, it takes a couple of hours. You really need to have enough gold in there to make it worth your while. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something. I like to put these videos out so we can all learn from my mistakes and my experiments, and hopefully we can all get some more gold. So thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.